Howdy everyone, Pocha here with an Age of Magic video, and in today's video we're going to do another spotlight. This time we are going to do a spotlight video on the two new Archons bringing, being brought into the game, Steris and Tyros. They are the range damager and melee damager of the Archon faction, and they are... they're golden boys. They have one purpose, and that is to deal with damage and a lot of it, and I think they have been built quite well in that aspect. In terms of damages, uh, melee damages and rain damages in the game, these two definitely stand out above the rest. So we are going to go over the ability, uh, their abilities, and we are going to show you what they can do. So first up we have Steris, he is the range damager. He weighs in at 1.8 million health, his speed is 201, his armor is 22k, magic damage resistance is 27k, magic, uh, basic damage is 170k, Critical hit chance 30, and critical damage is 270k. So pretty average stats all around. Not horrible, not great, but, you know, he's a range damager. So I think in terms of that, he's um he's not doing too horrible for himself. Let's go over his abilities now. His basic ability is Crossbow Bolt. Uh, damages an enemy. If the target is a demon, there is a 100% chance to attack them again. Damage from a critical hit is increased by 20%, and it triggers the range damager class mark. His first special ability is Bolt of Faith. Attacks a target, damage from the attack increases by 12% for every Archon or Keeper of a Rat ally. Damage to Demons is increased by 40%. So obviously there's a bit of a theme here. The Golden Boys are meant to be able to take out Demons. And with the release of Abaddon, I think these will be a good counter if anyone figures out how to use Abaddon properly. So... <clears throat> What can you say? It makes sense law-wise that angels beat demons, so nothing super surprising there. And it's good to see that, you know, some characters are getting a specific strength against certain types of characters. It leads into other things later on in the game if they do bring out, like, class wars or something where you need specific factions to beat, um, or, you know, world bosses or stuff like that, whether it's a, a demon, for example, you'd use Archons to get the most damage out as possible, and so forth. Anyway, the ability is on a four-turn cooldown, and it is it triggers the uh, range damage at class mark as well. His second special ability is Divine Retribution. Attacks all enemies, increases his own chance of doing a critical hit by 100% until the end of his next turn. Has a 20% chance for every Archon or Keeper of a Rat ally to reduce the target's chance of dodging by 70%. The target also takes an extra 24% damage from the next attack they take. So, uh, yeah, it's a ramp up ability. This guy's just, he's not really doing anything special except damage. That is his role as a damage dealer. He's not doing anything fancy like locking down or silencing or anti-healing. He's just smashing people. Uh, it comes with a six turn cooldown and it does trigger the range class mark. So every ability so far triggers the ranger class mark. It is kind of important, I'll explain a bit later. His passive is Celestial Guard. Has a 14% chance for every Archon or Keeper of a Rat ally to counter, attack an enemy that damages him. After which, a random Archon ally will use their basic attack against the target. Every time an enemy or ally dies, his damage increases by 17% for 2 turns, and he puts up a shield around himself with 6% of his max HP. So, again, he just makes himself stronger in the terms that he's just going to be dealing more and more damage. Again, not silencing, not locking down, not anti-healing, nothing of that nature. He is built to do damage, and I think it's been designed quite well. And there you go, there are all the stats at the bottom there. So, overall, um, I think he is a pretty good character. Out of the range damage dealers in the game, I think he may be the top one. I can't think of anyone off the top of my head that we use... In any of the meta teams, um, Raspit is Raspit a range damager? I think he is. Uh, other than that, yeah, Steris, damage dealer. That is all, and I think he will do a very good job of that. So let us move on to uh, Terus, Tiros, Tiros, Churos. You guys got it. This is the melee damager for the Archons, Tyros. Now, Tyros is by far my favorite character visual-wise. Before him, it was Sabretooth. I thought Sabretooth was awesome. He's still up there, but now it is Tyros. I think he looks amazing, and he does his little wing thing as well when he attacks, which is even better. And look at those flails. Like, he's, he's just all about business. Um, he weighs in at 2 million HP. His speed is 216 his armor is 19k, damage magic resistance 12k, basic damage 59k, his critical hit chance is 37, and his critical damage is 136k. He, again, is like Steris. He is built for damage. Nothing else is unique about him except the 
absolute smacking he can give his enemies. So let's go over his abilities, see what he can do, and then let's use these bad boys in battle and show them off a little bit, because we like to show off our shiny new things. So his basic attack is Mace Strike. Makes three strikes in a row against one target and removes all armor, increases buffs from the target, uh, armor increased buffs from the target, sorry, not increases buffs. Has a chance which increases by 12.6% for every arc on ally for the next four attacks on Tyros to deal 50% less damage, including dots, and he triggers the melee damage at class mark. His first special ability is Stellar Rain. Makes six strikes in a row that ignore the target's armor. So straight off the bat, sounds good against Siegfried. Has a 100% chance that a critical hit will also cause an extra 9% damage of the target's max HP. Reading that part, I'm thinking Pig Boy from Lunar Festival because he can increase the crit chance of allies, I'm pretty sure. And I've been hearing a lot about him lately, whether he actually becomes useful, different story. So it is a very strong... Um, melee damaging ability probably one of the strongest melee damaging abilities out there the fact that it does ignores armor which is huge armor can be an issue especially on siegfried uh it strikes nine times uh six times sorry and if it's a critical strike deals an extra nine percent of the target's max hp this ability can do a tremendous amount of damage and i i again I'm, i know i'm repeating myself but i feel like not all characters need to have those special lockdowns and silences and sleeps and anti-heals. I feel like there should be characters in the game that specialize in just absolutely smacking the enemy. Just punching the absolute life out of him. And this is the angle I think they've taken with these two new champions. So his second special ability is Light Cyclone. Strikes all enemies three times in a row. Every strike has a 67% chance to reduce the target's initiative by 28%. The attack completely ignores the target's armor. So this guy does not give a shit about armor. He is going to absolutely pummel you. Um, I think that's a good thing. Again, he's a melee damager. It just needs to be something that's in the game. And he triggers the melee damager class mark. And the ability cooldown is 7. Sorry, I didn't tell you the cooldown on the other one is 5. Lastly, we have his passive, Storm Warrior. The damage from every consecutive strike. So, off the bat, we all know his abilities are built on just hitting them multiple times. Uh, during one turn, increases by 8%. When Tyros is killed, he uses his Dying Breath to cast his Light Cyclone ability. So... The only, if you kill this guy in battle, he's going to he's gonna hit you pretty hard. I don't know how this will play out if he is the last character on the field. If you kill him, does his passive still go off? That's something I'd like to see. I won't be able to test that in this video, but when he is officially released, that would be an interesting thing to test out, if possible. Because it's hard to get the AI to... um kill him as the last target i guess you could just throw him into battle by himself and test it but it's up to you guys so yeah built around just yeah smashing the enemy that is all he is built for him and steris destroy targets and yeah so what better way to show you guys that than using them in battle so let's jump on into a little fight and see what they can do Okay, what better way to test these new heroes than fighting a full demon team with our new best hero, Abaddon. Let's smack that boy around, eh? We've got a full Archon team with a Defender of a Rat, Trevorard on the team. Uh, why not use a big piece of wood that we can just slap our enemies with, okay? So, let's start by applying the Ranger Mark. That is very important, okay? We're going to apply it to Abaddon. Uh, we get a bit of a crit there, which is really good. And now we use Stellar Rain. Now, this ability should... Do a lot of damage let's take it down to a regular speed uh if we crit we do nine percent of max hp for every crit we do it strikes six times so let's see what happens yeah okay all right i'm digging it i'm liking that we finally have a melee damager that can whop out a bit of damage um we get some free attacks there because we got hit with an aoe and our good mate steris is there to back us up so uh, Tyros got silence there, which is a bit of a pain, but that's fine. Okay, we get back up to two times speed. We're going to taunt, and we need our friend Steris. Okay, so we're going to cast Divine Retribution. This will give us an extra turn because we're proccing the Ranger Mark from our Argon. That's why it was really important to use him. And it gives us, uh, yeah, so it gives us a second turn, and we get a 100% crit rate. So in theory, we should be able to kill a champion, and we're going to aim for Abaddon here. Okay, so we use the AoE ability, which gives us the second turn. We have a 100% crit rate, plus all our damage 
uh, modifiers from versing demons and having archons and defenders of a rat. Let's see this. Let's take it down to a regular speed and one shot. 1.3 million. And that didn't even come up with the crit numbers, I feel like, because it just outright killed him. It is a massive relief to finally see a melee and range damager in the game that can do some damage. Okay, we're going to go to Zart because he is going to resurrect Abaddon in a second. Actually, it should come around right about now unless our mate can kill. No, that's alright. He did not. He did not resurrect. That's good for us. Okay, we are going to slow the enemy. And now... I'm going to... Now, Steris gets a double strike because he's versing the demons. He should kill Zart there. Good. Okay, I'm just going to attack the highest HP characters at the moment because I really want to kind of use uh, Tyros' AoE ability. So, just spreading out the attacks right now. Just single target. I feel like unless... um. So even though Styrus dodged, uh, Succubus dodged, Styrus still got the double attack off. I feel like we are going to get silenced again. I'm not going to be able to show off his AoE ability, which is a bit of a shame. Don't silence him. Yes, he's not silenced. Okay, let's do it. Light Cyclone. Can we kill? Can we do a lot of damage? It should. It should be an AoE uh, ability that does a lot of damage because it strikes three times and for each consecutive strike he does, he gets a damage increase. I'm pretty sure that's how his passive works. The damage consecutive strike turn increases by 8%. So, alright, let's see what happens. Okay. I mean, it's better than most AoE attacks in the game apart from Soothsayer. So we're going to finish off the enemy here. Double strike. And we win with three stars. Obviously not a real hard team to verse. Abaddon's probably, you know, the biggest threat on that team. But um, that was some pretty awesome damage there. I'm pretty happy with that. Archons. So, uh, yeah, I am honestly very happy. I feel like we have waited a very, very long time to get a decent ranged and melee damager in the game. We do have Raspit. Which, you know, he can do a pretty good job. But apart from him, I can't think of anyone else that really steps up. The last decent range damager we had was Arakan Axe Thrower. And that was in the beta of the game. And that was when the champions had really low health pools. That's when he really shined. So it's been a long time coming. I'm glad, you know, champions don't necessarily need to have lockdowns and silences and anti heals None of that fancy schmancy stuff. A melee damager and a range damager, they can be built to just wallop damage. And I feel like they've really struck that with these two champions. Um, so yeah, I think they did really good. Again, this is perfect testing situations. There are going to be multiple teams that you're going to verse where damage isn't going to be enough. You're going to need lockdowns and silences and whatnot. But it's good to see. I feel like these champions are able to, or they're going to get some play. They look amazing. They do an amazing job. And yeah. Anyway, ladies and gents, if you have any, uh, anyway, ladies and gents, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I will answer it to the best of my ability, uh, wherever you are in the world. Until next time, take care of yourself.